So today's lesson is again on box and whisker plots. We started with some of this information in Monday's lesson and we're going to now look at five total points in the data. We've looked at the first quartile, quartile one, second quartile, median, quartile two, and third quartile, quartile three. Now you can see that um, my notes are filled in. You're going to have to pause the video for a moment and copy all of this into the first box of the notes that you have. So this is um, in uh, your textbook on page 202 if you were looking in the B volume textbook um, and it's on page 202 in the text. So if you wanted to follow along in the book you can see this um, in the online textbook. So a box and whisker plot is a graphical display that shows how data is clustered around the median, middle, and how spread out along a number line that data is. So to make a box and whisker plot, you need to find five points. The first being the lower extreme or the lowest data number. The second being the lower quartile, sometimes called the LQ, or the first quartile, or quartile one, which represents the first 25%. The median, that's the first thing we find anyway, is the median, what's exactly in the middle. The second quartile, the 50% mark, or quartile two. The upper, or third quartile, the 75% point, um, quartile three, or upper quartile, sometimes it's called, depend on the textbook. And um, number five, the upper extreme or the highest value. So you need five points out of your data. Lower and highest, those are easy. What's the smallest number and highest? Median, put them in order, find the exact middle, find the median or the lower quartile, find the upper quartile. So we're going to do that. So hopefully you've copied this down. If not, pause the video. So um, here is a box and whisker plot drawn above a number line. Notice it sits above, it's sitting above the number line. It's not on the number line. From the box plot, sometimes they're called box and whisker, sometimes in short they're just called box plot. From the box plot, state the lower quartile, the median, the upper quartile, the range, and the interquartile range. So some of these questions are not in this list here. Range and interquartile range aren't in here. So we also have to find the range and the interquartile range. So I'm going to fill in this list that I have here. What is the lower quartile? The lower quartile is this four and a half. This dot right here is the lower quartile. The upper quartile is at the other end of the box that we see here, which is seven. The median, the middle number, has the dash through the box or the slash through it in the box. The median is five and a half. The lower extreme, the lowest value, that's here, that's three and a half. And the upper extreme, the highest value, that's nine. So now I can find my range, which is 9, take away that 3.5, which equals 5.5. And, and the interquartile range, upper quartile of 7 minus lower quartile of 4.5 gives me 2.5. So what does the box plot imply about the data? Well, if you're just looking at the box plot, the distance between three and a half and five and a half is actually smaller than the distance between five and a half and nine. I can see that the lower 50% here from the median to the lower extreme, which I now have colored in green here, is smaller distance than from five and a half to nine, the upper one. So the lower 50% of the data is closer. That's one thing I know. Or I could have said.
said the upper 50% of the data is more spread. Um, I also can see, just looking at the box here, that this part of the box, this quarter of the box, is smaller than this quarter of the box. That the distance between the median and quartile one is closer or smaller than the spread between the median and the upper quartile. So the second thing I could say here is the data values are closer between quartile one, and I'll just abbreviate that, and quartile two, the median, than quartile two, the median, and quartile three, which is why the, oops, I should make that a little bit smaller, which is why the lower 50% is closer together because of this this quarter here is smaller than the quarter between the median and the upper quartile. That's a couple things that I can see from this already drawn box and whisker plot. Now, now we're going to learn how to make that. So the next slide shows you the steps to draw a box and whisker plot. And this is all filled out in your notes for you, so I'm just going to read this. Arrange the data in offsending order littlest to greatest. Calculate the five point summary. So the lower extreme, the lower quartile, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, and the upper extreme. That's the five points that you need. Draw a number line that extends from the least data point to the greatest data point. Make your number line. Place a dot for each of the five point summary. So put a dot where the lower extreme, quartile one, quartile two, quartile three, and the upper extreme match with that number line. Draw a box above the number line with ends at quartile one and quartile three. So the uh, upper quartile and the lower quartile make the outline of the box and draw a vertical line through the box at quartile two. Draw whiskers, they're called whiskers, from quartile one to the lowest value and from quartile three to the greatest value. So now we're going to put these steps into play. 16 students took a quiz and their scores were 3, 8, 7, 11, 11, 5, 12, 12, 8, 7, 7, 9, 5, 10, 15, and 4. Draw a box plot for the data and label it with the five point summary. So first thing we have to do is uh, put our numbers in order from least to greatest. Three, four, five, five, seven, 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 eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven, twelve, twelve, and fifteen. 16 students. So now I'm going to count to make sure I have 16 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16. So there, 8 from either end is going to be the middle ones. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I don't have an exact middle number, but both the medians from the middle happen to be the exact same number, 8. So quartile 2 is 8. So that's one of the points. I got one done. Now I'm going to find the lower quartile. So that 8 of the median does stay in the lower half of the numbers. So there are 8 numbers in the lower half. So 4 from either end, 1, 2, 3, 4, this 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, this 5. Halfway between them is 6, or add 5 plus 7, which is 12 divided by 2. You're going to get 6 anyway. So quartile 1 is 6. Go to the upper quartile. 1, 2, 3, 4, that 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, this 11. So 
the upper quartile 3, they're the exact same number, so the upper quartile is 11. The lowest extreme, that's 3, that's what's called the LE, or the lowest extreme. And the upper extreme, highest value, greatest data point, is 15. So I've got to make a number line that at least goes from 3 to 15. Could I make it from 1 to 16? Yes. Could I make it from 0 to 20? Yes. So you're going to draw a number line. And yes, you should use a straight edge, some edge of your book or the edge of your binder or something to make a straight line. It does have to have arrows on it. It is a number line. And then to the best of your ability, equally tick mark it off. You could even use a ruler and mark it every centimeter, something like that. So one, I'm going to go from one to 16. So it does include at least the lower value of three and the upper value of 15. Five, six, try to mark it evenly, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. I like to go at least one on either side of the upper and lower extreme. So now I put my five dots above the number line. So three, and I like to put them a little bit above. So three, quartile one is six, put a dot. Uh, quartile two is eight. Quartile three is 11. And the upper extreme is 15. So as the direction said, draw a box above the number line with ends at quartile one and quartile three. So here's my box. It includes and goes through quartile one and quartile three. Oops, let me move that over just a tiny bit, that box. Um, and put a line, draw a line through the median. And then extend a whisker from the upper quartile 11 to the upper extreme 15. Draw a whisker from the lower quartile of 6 to the lower extreme 3. And don't forget, this is a graph, so make sure you give it a title. And the title can go above it if you have space or below it. And these are scores on a test, so I'm just going to call this scores. Either place, doesn't matter, just make sure you give it a title. So I can see that my data is more spread in the upper 50% than it is in the lower 50%. Whoops. It's more spread out. They go from 3 to 8 in the lower half and from 8 to 15 in the upper half. So things are closer together, more people scored closer together in the lower half of the scores on this quiz. Uh, the table shows the average monthly precipitation of Portland, Oregon in inches of rain. Um, draw a box plot on the average monthly rainfall and label it with a five point summary. Well, you have to know all five of the points so uh, in order to um, make the box and whisker plot, or the box plot. So, oh, we have decimals here, and we've got to put these in order from least to greatest. So I've already done that. Seven tenths, nine tenths, and I'm not going to put commas just because it's, well, I don't want them to look like decimals. I guess maybe I will. Uh, one and seven tenths, two and four tenths, Two and six tenths, two and nine tenths, three and seven tenths, four and two tenths, five and one tenth, five and six tenths, five and seven tenths. So I know there's 12 months in a year. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So my median is halfway between 2 and 6 tenths and 2 and 9 tenths. 
So if you add those together, you get 5 and 5 tenths. So to find the exact middle, add them together and divide by 2, and you get um, 2 and 75 hundredths. That's quartile 2. That's the median. Now I'm going to use that 2 and 6 tenths in the lower half, and finding quartile 1, it's going to be halfway 1, 2, 3, between 1, 2, 3, 1 and 6 tenths and 1 and 7 tenths, which I know halfway between there is 1 and 65 hundredths. Um, that's quartile 1. 1, 2, 3 in the upper quartile, 1, 2, 3 in the lower quartile, halfway between 4 and 2 tenths and 5 and 1 tenth, add that together, you get 9 and 3 tenths divided by 2 gives you 4 and 65 hundredths. That's quartile 3. Then my upper extreme is 5 and 7 tenths. My lower extreme is 7 tenths. So my number line is going to have tenths on it. Hmm. I think I am going to, well, with a straight edge, that doesn't look very straight. I'll use my line creator here for my smart board. And it will be straight, nice and straight. Make sure you have arrows on it. It is a number line. So I'm going to count by maybe seven tenths. Start with, yeah, maybe. Okay, so. 7 tenths, 1 and 7 tenths, I'm going to count by 1's, 2 and 7 tenths, 3 and 7 tenths, 4 and 7 tenths, 5 and 7 tenths. I think that's the easiest. Ooh, it's kind of close. This one's a little bit, that one's a little far. Put it a little closer. You do want these to be as equally spaced as possible. So I have my upper extreme on there, and I have my lowest extreme on there, 7 tenths. And uh, so I, I'm going to be able to put all five of my points on here. So 7 tenths is my lower extreme. 1 and the 7 tenths, 1 and 65 hundredths, actually, excuse me, 1 and 65 hundredths, which is very close to 1 and 7 tenths, so maybe just a little bit to the left there, 1 and 65 hundredths, quartile 1, lower quartile. My median is 2 and 75 hundredths, oops, so that's going to be just a teeny bit to the right of 2 and 7 tenths. And 4 and 65 hundredths, very close to 4 and 7 tenths, a little bit to the left. 4 and 65 hundredths, and 5 and 7 tenths, my upper extreme. Put a box around my quartiles, slash my median. A little bit. Oh, for some reason it keeps shadowing off a little bit here. And connect my box and whiskers. And this is the average monthly precipitation. This is rainfall in inches. So I'm going to call it rainfall. I could say in Oregon, but I'm not. Inches. I'm going to say the label that it is. Rainfall in inches. So don't forget your title. So we've made a couple box and whisker plots. And the second part of this, which I'm going to leave for class tomorrow, because this is long enough, um, we're going to talk about how do we compare two of these things. Um, and we'll finish the second half of this in class tomorrow.